Hello everyone, this is teacher Hanin and today we're going to do a revision of all the skills that we already took during the semester and especially during the time that we are learning uh, by on distance. Uh, first of all, I want you to re-watch the video that is entitled The Garden of Its Two Parts. I want you to watch it again in order to remember the story. And I want you also to open the booklet and read the story from your booklet before you go and do the homework that you are supposed to do after watching this video, okay? Then we are going to start revising some of the skills that we already discussed and you already know, but it's a nice uh, way to put everything together and to make connections between uh, all the skills and all the information that you already know. So let's start by parts of speech. Now the parts of speech are the nouns, the verbs and the adjectives that you know. Now, why do we call them parts of speech? We call them parts of speech because they are the words or the parts that you include in your speech. So when we talk, we use the nouns, we use the verbs, we use the adjectives. So these are called parts of speech because you use them when you speak. And let's start with the nouns. The nouns are the names of people, places, animals, and things. Remember the song that we used to sing in the, in the class? Okay, I want you to sing it with me now. So you say, uh, start with a person, then a place, then a thing, then an animal, okay? And you can say people instead of person because person is singular, people is plural. So you say, people in the world are nouns, 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 nouns. Sing with me. People in the world are nouns, nouns, nouns. Ali, Ahmed, and Omar. You can say any name you want. Let's go to places. Places in the world are nouns, 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 nouns. The places in the world are nouns, 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 school, hospital, and mall. You can talk about things also. Things in the world are nouns, 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 the things in the world are nouns, nouns, nouns. Crayons, teddy bear, and mobile, any things you want, you can name them. Animals, animals in the world are, I can't hear you. Nouns, 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 nouns. The animals in the world are nouns, nouns, nouns dogs, cats, and giraffes. So the nouns are the names of people, places, animals, and things. Okay, very well. Now the nouns, they can be singular or plural. So they can be singular, plural, singular, plural. Singular, that is number one, or plural, that is more than one, like one jar, two jars, three jars, four jars. These are called plurals. Now, how do we make plurals? We make a plural by adding an S to the noun. For example, bag, bags, dog, dogs, girl, girls. So you, you're talking here about one bag, but when you added an S, the plural S, we call it the plural S, I added, uh, I mean more than one bag. Let's count them. One, two, three. So you have three bags, okay? The S that is added to the noun, it's called a plural noun. So you add an S if, if you want to make a plural noun. But sometimes some nouns are called irregular nouns. So they are irregular regular nouns. Why they are crazy and irregular? Because they don't accept the S. They don't let the S to make them plural. They have their own plurals. You should know them and memorize them and study them. Like, remember when we said person is one people, person people? Why I didn't say persons? No one knows. They are crazy words. So person, 
people. Foot, feet, tooth, teeth, mouse, mice, fish, fish. These are called the irregular nouns or the irregular plurals. You can find the nouns at the beginning of sentences as subjects. And this is something we already discussed. We said that the sentence has a subject and has a predicate. And the subject is the doer of the action. And the subject is always a noun or a pronoun. So if you have a sentence and you are looking for a noun, usually you will find the noun at the beginning of the sentence, okay? Because subjects are usually nouns. Look at this sentence. Sammy reads a book every day. So Sammy is a noun. A book is also a noun, but we're talking about here about subjects that are nouns. So Sammy reads a book every day. Well done. You can describe the nouns and talk about them using adjectives. This is also nice. Now, when we talk about things, we can talk about the things also. Uh, or describe them. Or when we talk about people, you can also describe the people. How do we describe them? We use adjectives to describe them, like uh, red, green, fat, thin, ugly, tall, old, young. All of these are called adjectives. And usually the adjectives, not usually, always, the adjectives come then the noun comes. So the adjectives, they come before the noun, okay? Like red, bag. You don't say bag, red. First the adjective, then the noun. So you say red, bag. Which word is the adjective? It's red because we said the colors are always adjectives. And also it talks about the bag. It describes the bag. Fast horse. So what are we saying about the horse? The horse is a noun. We're saying that the horse is fast. So fast is the adjective that is used to describe the noun horse. Same here in square house. Square house is uh, describing the shape. And we said also that shapes are always adjectives like square house. Now, uh, we talked about the nouns, we talked about the adjectives. We're going to talk about the third part of speech, which is the verb. Now, the verb, what is a verb? Do you remember the verb? Now, the verb is something that you can do, like run, sleep, eat, laugh, ha, 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 ha. So these are things you can do. If you read the word, and if you can do the word that you read, then it's a verb, okay? Another thing, the verb happens in tenses. You cannot use the verb, take it, and use it in a sentence because the things, they always happen at a certain time. So the verb is done at a certain time. It's all, either done in the past, or being done every day. So you have to use tenses. You have to use the tenses that you learn, either in the past tense or in the present simple tense that is happening every day or every night or every week or every year or every month. Okay, so it's either happened yesterday or every, happening every day. Now, when the verb is done in the past, like it's done yesterday, I don't use it as it is in the sentence. I have to add ed to the verb, like walk, walked, pray, prayed yesterday, she walked yesterday, he prayed last night, he played taraweeh last night, okay? That is what adding a tense, the ed is a tense, it's time. So you add it to the verb in order to show when is the verb done, uh, is done or being done. So you have to add ed when you use the past simple tense to the verb. 
Now, when the verb expresses or talks about things that are a habit or things that you usually do, like you usually do every day or every month, that is, in this case, you should check for the subject, not only the verb. If you should look at the subject, if the subject is singular, you have to add an S to the verb. If the subject is plural, you do nothing. You just keep the verb as it is, but you have to keep an eye on the subject in this case. Only in the present simple, in everyday case, okay? Examples. The boy walks to school every day. The babies cry loudly every night. Now, why did we, now you have here every day, you have every night, but why did you add an S to walks? Because the subject is the boy and the boy is singular. That's why I have to add an S to the verb. The babies are plural. You don't have to add an S to the verb here. Remember, if the subject is alone, it will cry because he's alone. He has no one to play with. So you bring the S and put it to the verb in order to play with the subject. But if, this, if the subject is already plural, it has a lot of people to play with, a lot of things to play with, you don't have then to add an S to the verb, okay? So if you are using past tense, you have to add ed to the verb. If you are using a present simple tense, you have to add an s to the verb if the subject is singular. Now we're going to talk about sentence structure. And remember that the sentence is being built just like a house. You build it just like a house. So there are some important things that you should have from outside and there are some important things that you should have from inside also. And when we talk about the sentence, you should uh, remember your hands. How many fingers are in your hand? You have five fingers. And the sentence has five important things to have. So uh, show me your hands. I want to see your hands to count what are the important things that you should have in a sentence. Okay, now the sentence, we always say that the sentence should start with a capital letter and end with a full stop question mark or an exclamation mark. So it should start with a capital letter, end with a full stop question mark or an exclamation mark. It should have a subject, it should have a predicate, and it should have a complete meaning. So subject, predicate, and a complete meaning. Like for example, you cannot say the astronaut, uh, for example, uh, is a shark. What, the astronaut is a shark? That doesn't make any sense. So the sentence should have a meaning, a good meaning. So the capital letter, the ending mark, which is a full stop question mark or an exclamation mark, a subject, the doer of, this, uh, of the verb, the predicate, the verb, and the rest of the sentence, and it should have a complete meaning. Now, remember that the nouns, they come at the beginning as subjects, and then the verb, they come as predicates. So, and the, remember that the predicate is the verb and all the words after the verb. So, we are having here a quick overview. Okay, I want you to circle the subject and underline the predicate. So let's try to have like this. Okay, the big green frog jumped in the lake. Remember the song about subjects and predicates? What's a subject and what's a predicate? The subject tells who or what, who or what, who or what the subject tells who or what does something the predicate tells what they did what they did what they did the predicate tells what they did or what they are so if i want to find the subject i need to ask by who or what so in this case i will say who jumped 
It's the big green frog. Well done. So you circle it. Now, what did the big green frog do? He jumped in the lake because the predicate tells what they did. Now, the horse likes to eat sugar. You have to ask for the subject by who. Who likes to eat sugar? The horse likes to eat sugar. Well done. What does the horse do? He likes to eat sugar. So this is the predicate. Here is the verb. The verb is jump. It's the verb and all of the word after the verb. That is the predicate. Here is the verb likes. And here you have all the predicate is the verb and all the words after the verb. Okay. Now we're going to have a quick revision of phonics. And how are we going to revise the phonics? We're going to revise it by reading some of the stories that I, or actually not some, two stories that I already uh, gave you. But we will read them again in order to practice because practice makes excellence. So the more you read, the more you perfect you are. Okay, now uh, we, we will start with our first story. Our first story is entitled Ted and Fran. And here we're going to focus more about the consonant blends. Like uh, uh, any consonant with an R, and we call them the R blends, the R family blends and any consonant with L, and we call them the L consonant blends. But to remember, what's the difference between a vowel and a consonant? Now the vowel is O, A, I, E, and U. These are the sounds in English. Now the consonants are the letters that they don't have the sound. They only what? They only uh, make the sound if they are followed by a vowel. Now, sometimes we have two consonants or three consonants, and we call them in this case a blend because uh, you put them together and like a blend, like the blender. Let's read the words here. You have frog, grass, fran, black, spot. Lip, lop. Okay, let's start reading. Now, while reading a story, you have to put in your mind all the phonics rules that you already took. So you have to pay attention to the font to the vowels. Here it's an F. So Ted is a frog in the grass. Fran is a hen in the grass. So you have grass, frog, fran. These words, they have uh, blends. They have consonant blends. Ted is a green, is green with black spots. Fran is red. Ted flaps, Ted flops, Ted is wet. Fran did not flap, Fran did not flop, Fran is not wet. Fran gets up, can you spot Fran? Ted gets up. Ted and Fran sat. Ted did not get wet. Fran did not get wet. By this, we have finished the story. It's easy and nice, right? That's why I want you to practice more and more and more because the more you practice, the more perfect in reading you will be.
I want now to revise the long O, also through a story, and I send this story for you. Now you have the long O sound. The O, O and A making an O sound, O and W making an O sound also. Let's read the words together. John told. John, old, see you have an old, any, like told, fold, old, they are uh, having, they all have an O that is like hold here. Any word that has old ending, it has a long O sound. Here you have OA, goat, here you have an OW, yellow, hold, showed, bowl, most, because it's a short word, remember? Scold, scolded, this is a verb in the past. Toast, glowed, opened, slow, go. So they all have O sound. Let's start reading. John asked, is it time? Hop in the car, dad told John. John's mom and dad drove her to a farm. And here you have an O with a magic E. The magic E will go to the O and say, hi, O, what's your name? My name is O. O drove. So John's mom and dad drove her to a farm. John hitted fat pink pigs and an old gray goat. Here you have an O and an A. She saw cute yellow chicks. May I hold them? She asked. Farmer Jed showed John how to brush the horse. Grab here, it's an ah because it's a, only a vowel with no other vowel. It only makes an ah sound. Here you have a U, you have a long U because you have here Mr. E. Mr. E will go to the U and say, Hi, you, what's your name? My name is you. You cube from the green bowl. Jed told John. Those are what she likes most. Mom, Dad, and John drove to an old shop for lunch. First, wash those hands, Mom scolded. Then John had ham and tossed. John's mom and dad drove to her school. Her teacher told, I'm sorry, her teacher told them that John always has good answers in math. John's face glowed with pride. Here you have an I sound. They opened the door and left for home. It had been a long day. John's tired. Uh, John's tired feet went slow. That's the last stop, Mom said. Let's go home and eat dinner. Well done, everyone. So by this, we have finished our, our material, material for the semester. I hope you understand everything. If you don't, please contact me or contact teacher Dima so we can help you as much as we can. But we want you to study and read as much as you can. Now, after watching this video, you will have a worksheet that is uploaded on the website. I want you to do it and send it to me. Bye.